All right, welcome, welcome, welcome. Five o'clock just before. We've got a couple of people already in the channel, so we'll start a little bit early. Let everybody come in. Welcome, Wednesday, hump day. We are going to be making, let's get this up here. We are going to be making cream of mushroom soup today. So hopefully, if you can hear me, just give me a give me a thumbs up in the comments or just say hello. That way I know if, that way I know people have arrived. There's always a bit of, of a delay from going live to when people I think actually get get into the video. I need a glass of water though to start off. How's everybody's week? How's everybody's week so far? Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. Excellent. Welcome everybody. Christine, Dean, Nadia, is Stella here? Maybe not yet. Maybe forgot forgot to tell her. We'll uh, we'll get started because I'm I'm I don't know about everybody else. It's five o'clock here. I'm I'm getting hungry. Uh, this is gonna this is going to take a little bit. So let's get it started. We're gonna do cream of mushroom soup. Easy soup recipe. This is kind of a perfect uh, beginner, not beginner, but easy easy soup to do that uh, you can kind of make the same style of you know vegetable soup. So we're gonna do a puree soup, which is always good. And Stella's out playing, that's okay. Uh, must be sunny, must be sunny there. Uh, cream mushroom soup, so we've got, we've got three types of mushrooms. We're gonna use, uh, we're gonna chop up, we're gonna use, uh, cr these are cremini mushrooms, like brown mushrooms. And we've got the regular white button mushrooms. And then also a couple of uh, portobello mushrooms we're going to put in there as well. This can be basically any kind of mushroom that you you can you can think of. You can put in mushroom soup. Um, if you have some of the like dry dry morel mushroom wild mushrooms, anything can go in these. And uh, what we're going to do, we'll have that. We're going to chop up. We're going to have a yellow, one yellow onion, a couple of cloves of garlic in there, and. That is it for the vegetable ingredients. I've got some stock, uh, kind of the cheating stock in the carton, but um, you could use veg vegetables if you have vegetable stock or chicken stock made, but I just have the carton, so we'll use that. A bit better than using just water. If you don't have the stock, you could use water. It's always nice to use a bit of the stock, though, for the, for the flavor. Uh, we are going to thicken this, this soup, though. Uh, it's puree. We're going to puree the soup all together, but we're going to thicken it with a... Uh, with a uh, roux, so a roux, roux style soup. And with the roux, we need uh, butter, which we're gonna saute off our mushrooms and onions in. This is probably about, oh geez, two, three, table, three tablespoons, quite a bit of butter. Don't be afraid to use butter. And that gets thickened with, uh, we've got some flour that we'll stir in there. So we'll show you how to do that as we, as we go. And then for the garnish, I've got, um, I've got a, a, a baguette here to use up. So I'm going to cut up, uh, I'm gonna cut up some, uh, and make some croutons for on top of the soup. And yes, we get to, so Nadia. Yeah, we get to see see a roux. So this is a perfect way for thickening for thickening soup. Uh, roux is pretty pretty common uh, way of thickening soup. And you could also use. Let's put on the cutting board here so you can see. And we'll start uh, we'll start chopping uh, we'll start chop we'll start chopping up. There we go. There we are. So we'll get the mushrooms going. So first off, I am going to. Let's just get this here, get some room. We don't need to be too, go too crazy with the, with the mushrooms. We can just uh, do them a quick slice because we are, we are going to be uh, pureeing all this all, 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 all of this. So good, good question. Um, Christine, it is a uh, butter. Yeah, always butter. We bought actually margarine, just unsalted like margarine by mistake last, last time, but thankfully it's all gone. So this is uh, butter, unsalted butter. Okay, so we just really want to just chop, chop these. You can kind of see we're just rough chop slicing them. If you like your soup, uh, not wanting to puree it, you could also do that. I like pureed vegetables, uh, vegetable soups, so especially mushroom soup. Uh, but if you were, you you would want to. Um, if you if you weren't going to be pure, pureeing this, you would want to slice these a little bit thinner, like so for for soup, so you can so you can eat them a bit better. So you want to definitely do them thinner if they were uh, if you weren't going to puree this. And uh, oh, Norman's here. Welcome. 
Thanks for stopping by. So we'll just get all these chopped up first. These were really, these mushrooms were really dirty when I got them. So I gave them a, I gave them a quick rinse, but they actually kind of need a bit more of a rinse. Don't wash them too far ahead of time because they'll get kind of, they get kind of soggy. Just do them just before, just before you're going to cut them up. And it's going to look like a lot, a lot of mushrooms, but these really, really shrink when, when we get cooking them. And I haven't had, I haven't had mushroom soup in ages. So this is kind of good. And uh, I don't know if she's here, but Stephanie, uh, who normally is one of the watchers, she, she was uh, messaging me on Facebook about mushroom soup, asking me what, because she she made it the other day, so I kind of had sent her the sent her the recipe that I kind of use in my head, um, but it doesn't always make a lot of sense when I'm trying to message it in a couple of lines. So I figured, might as well we might as well just uh, just make it. Oh, thanks, Anto. Perfect. Yeah, so we're getting there. Now with the portobellos, it's going to be the same as when we did with the uh, when we did those. Portobello mushroom burgers. You want to take out the gills. Just scrape them out with a spoon. There, because if you leave them in there, it's going to come out really black. And we want the soup to look like more, you know, it's going to be more brown. Then uh, we don't want like dark black soup. Doesn't look very good. So we just scraped, just scraped that out with a spoon. And. These, these you can just cut up in cube. And we'll put them all together. There we are. So all the mushrooms, all chopped up, ready to go. I will heat up and start to warm up my my pan here my pot for the soup and we'll let that heat up and I'm going to uh, get the onion ready to go here too so just one onion is fine if you're making more this is going to be enough for this is going to make you know oh geez probably close to two liters of soup by the time everything's finished but if, if you were making a bit more you could add another onion and we'll give this just a, a dice. Not it doesn't have doesn't have to be doesn't have to be um, super super fine because again we're, we're going to be pure, pureeing all this up at the end. So you can just kind of do a um, like a rough rough chop. So I'll just show you there. So just kind of a rough rough chopped onions. And good question. Yeah, you must have if missed the beginning, but the, the mushrooms that I'm using, Norman, for for this uh, recipe, I've got some uh, white button mushrooms and a couple of portobello mushrooms and then some of the brown cremini mushrooms. But you could use any any type of any type of mushroom that you that you want. Yeah, good question. Good question. Morels are nice. Whatever you can kind of find. And a lot of times if you don't have the you can use the base, the base of the, you know, the button mushrooms, the cremini mushrooms are pretty common to find in grocery stores. You can't always, can't always get the portobello, the big ones. Um, but if you get the base of just the button and the, the brown ones, it's a nice start. And then sometimes you can find like a dry, like some of the dry, the dry mushrooms, dry morels, porcini. So you can rehydrate those before you're going to do it in the stock and then uh, use those uh, as well on your recipe. And I'm just going to add this one, this one clove, clove of garlic. We don't want it to be too, like too garlicky. Mostly mushroom taste. So just give that a peel. This would also be, be good if you had a bit, a bit of roasted garlic left over. You could put the roasted garlic in there as well. That would be quite nice. And just a rough chop again because everything's going to be blended. There we go. 
So into the pot, we will melt the uh, butter. Just let that let that melt off before we start sauteing all the ingredients. I'll just put this to the side. Let's move this so you can uh, hopefully see it a little bit better. There we go. And uh, we'll let this melt in the pan. It's going to look like a lot of butter, but that's what's going to give it the give it the rich the richness. We're going to finish it with cream, but not really a lot. So it's nice to have uh, a lot of uh, a lot of when you when you're when you're in a restaurant and the soup always tastes tastes really good. It's because there's lots of butter. That's the secret. That's the secret. So. That's, that's melted. I'm gonna add the uh, onions and we'll saute these off and turn them up a little bit, medium heat. So we'll let these, we'll let these saute, we'll let these sweat off for a little bit and then we'll add the, we'll add the mushrooms. And we'll all start coming together. In the meantime, uh, because we are going to make croutons, we'll do it in the uh, in the little in the little um, instant oven. There, air fryer um, is handy because it's just we're going to make a small amount of croutons, so it's perfect for that. I'll just cut a few off and then we'll we'll put them in there. So these are just sweating. We'll give this room here. So for the bread. This is a good way to use up a baguette if you have it. If it's gone a little, not stale, but if it's gone a little, you know, not as fresh after a couple days. So let's see, five, six, seven, eight. I'll do ten. We'll put this will give us be a couple, a couple to use. And then I'm still gonna make, I think, some garlic bread with this uh, tomorrow. So with that, just sliced up. And then if you can see, let's just put them here. We'll just lay them. We're just gonna lay them on the lay them on the tray. And before we toast these off, we'll toast them in a little bit. I'm just gonna put them to the side. And then we're basically done. That's all the ingredients cut up. So we're basically done, done with the cutting board, which is nice and waiting for the soup. So sweat these off. Always oh, smells good with the garlic and the um, onions going here. Oh, you missed the French bread. We're gonna, we'll get to. Don't worry. We'll, uh, don't worry. We'll get to that in a minute. There's more, more to come. Because we're gonna have a lot of time. We'll, we'll finish off the bread once the soup is kind of simmering, Christine. Because it's not finished yet. I'll show you a little. A little, a little tip. So those are sweat, sweating off a little bit. Let's add the mushrooms, all, all the mushrooms. It's gonna look like a ton, but it is going to really start to, the mushrooms have a lot of liquid in them, so they will uh, definitely start to, start to, uh, they'll, they'll really shrink. We'll, we'll see this as we go. And Good question. Yes. So a little bit behind. Where do croutons? Crunchy croutons. But a scone, cheese scone would be good. Yeah. I've got um, I've got a scone recipe that I finally tested out uh, that I think I'll attempt to do on the show. As again, I'm not much of a baker. And uh, the kitchen always looks like a disaster after I after I bake, but uh, I'm going to, I'll maybe try one of the, I'll do it on a weekend or something like that. Maybe do it, do it, do it live because I, I finally found a good one and it, uh, it turned out pretty good. I made cinnamon, cinnamon scones, but I bought some blueberries, frozen blueberries. So we'll do that. So these you just want to saute off medium heat still. And then, uh, let them, uh, let these all, let these all cook. So all the butter is in there. We'll be adding the flour shortly after the mushrooms. After the mushrooms uh, uh, saute off a little bit, we'll we'll add the we'll add the flour. And I'm just going to pour the stock into a 
into a measuring cup. I find it's easier to pour pour in out of the into the soups as we go here as opposed to out of the carton all the time. Now, one thing you you could put in here as well before we uh, before we add the flour. If you had a little bit of uh, white wine, it would be nice to deglaze it with a little bit of white wine, just a touch. Not you don't want it too much because it's going to get you don't want the soup to taste like wine. But just a even a couple tablespoons would be nice. And yes, they do smell good. They do smell really good. Some people don't like mushrooms, so I don't know. I've always liked them. And yes, Gabby has to come over. We still have to have her, we'll have her over one of these times to show for some pasta or something. We'll figure something out. She's a good, she's a good cook, that's for sure. Oh, welcome, Susan's here too. Hi, Susan. 28 degrees. There we go. Mushroom soup, my favorite. After leek soup and broccoli. Yeah, I would say mushroom soup is my favorite. Broccoli is a good soup as well. Yeah, broccoli and uh, cheese soup is nice. Um, potato leek soup is really good. I like that. That would be my, that'd be a good. That's a good. Uh, that's a good one to make. A little bit different with potato leek soup is it's you know thickened with potatoes. You don't need even you don't need a you don't need a roux or any anything to to thicken it. Um, you could also do that with the mushroom soup if you didn't if you weren't if you didn't want to have like flour or if you you know you, if you can't have if you can't eat it, uh, you could always put in a, a couple of uh, peeled white potatoes and uh, and it's cooler there. So you can put a couple of you cook, peel a couple of white potatoes, throw them in, chop them up, throw them in there, and as as if you were to as you were to blend it, it's actually going to thicken it up. So potatoes is one one way to do it. So you can see how much the mushrooms have already shrunk in size as they go here. So a little bit longer, we'll let them go a bit more, and then we're going to add the uh, we'll add the flour. Mushroom got on the floor. Run that away. There we go. So cooler, cooler in BC. Well, then it's perfect. To, this would be perfect to make a mushroom soup on a cooler day. It's, it's, it, you know, Susan. It's a little bit. It's a little bit cool. I mean, it's still warm. It's still warm here for people that have lived that have lived here in Calgary for a long time. But coming as we're new here into the city, it's uh, it's windy and it's it's the wind's got a bit of a chill. So it's cooler here too for us, anyways. Okay, there we go. So let's let's get the flour let's get the flour added into there. These are these are uh, these have been sweated off. So for a roux, it's basically it's a thickening agent, thick, thickening mix combination. So it's always a like a fat and a flour. So the fat could either be an, an oil, a lard. Uh, in this in our case here, it's butter, um, and it's typically traditionally equal parts so if you have one cup of butter you're going to add one cup of, of of flour to it so that's where you have to kind of adjust um, with soup it doesn't have to quite be as uh, as precise um, we have a good probably what i said about third cup of uh, third cup of um of butter there all we're going to do now uh is sprinkle in a little bit of flour to be the same like basically the same ratio Best way to best way to kind of describe and mix it all in. It's going to look like kind of a gloopy a gloopy mess, but it's going to all absorb into the all you know all the liquid is going to absorb it. So all we want to do is stir it all in and let it uh, coat everything. And we're going to be still not adding the stock because we want the flour we want the flour to cook. And if we're sauteing it, 
the flour gets a nice kind of, you know, we're not getting it really dark, dark, but it's going to, it's going to cook the flour and it gives it a nice kind of roasty, roasted taste. If you were to add the, if you were to add the um, stock and stuff right away with the raw flour, it's, you could, it would still cook as, as it, as it simmers, but it's not, it's still going to have that kind of flour taste unless you really cook it out. So it's better to kind of cook it before we add any other, other liquid. Hopefully that makes sense. And let me see if I can show. So it's almost like you can kind of see, it's not a, I mean, it's not a, it's not a paste, but it kind of looks like a where the flour and everything's mixed together. It definitely looks like a little mush, I guess would be the best way to describe it. So yeah, first time. So uh, yeah, normally roux is like separate, but with soups, uh, Norman, you could you can just throw it right in with all the vegetables, because you're because you want to have basically with a roux. Well, first off, with a soup, you want to cook. Usually, a roux is like used to thicken sauces, right? So with with a soup, obviously, there's all the vegetables that are in it, and we want to cook off the vegetables. So it's always kind of nice to cook the vegetables in the fat that you're going to use for the root, because then you're going to get, keep all the flavors in there, right? And then when you when you mix, when you mix in the flour, all everything's still all together, and you're not you're not you're not losing any of the the flavor in there, and if it's all kind of sautéed together. So there we are. Hopefully that makes. So yeah, everybody was thinking the same thing. So a little, yeah, soup, you can add it all in. Don't worry. This smells, too bad you can't smell this. So there we go. We've done this about, it's about five minutes, four minutes, five minutes. Now we'll add the, we'll start to add the stock. Now when, you, when you're cooking with a roux, you don't want to add, you want to add, if the roux is hot, you want to add cold. You, you don't want to add, it, it, it'll help to, uh, you won't get the same lumps. If you're adding like hot to hot or, you know, cold, it just doesn't, doesn't, doesn't work the same. So you want to add the cold, the cold stock. And you can just add, just add a little bit at the beginning because we want to make sure it's all kind of gets in there, stirred around and we don't want to, sometimes we have to adjust the amounts. We might not, uh, the thing with, the thing with soup is you don't want it too you don't want it too thin but you don't want it too thick I, I like I kind of like I kind of like my soups the pureed soups especially a little bit on the thinner on the thinner side um, and but more I guess the, the thing would be use more mushrooms like use more of what you're going to puree in a soup this can go for any soup if you have red peppers or you have spinach or broccoli soup add more make it get it thicker with the vegetables that you're going to puree instead of instead of using thickening like roux and stock you know because if it's, it's the roux is nice to do to thicken it and give it a bit of richness for a, a little bit but you, you don't want it to be too thick from you know just the roux and stock it's nice to have the flavor of all the and the and the uh and the vegetables in there all the all the mushrooms or whatever vegetable you're using because that's going to give it the flavor. And when you puree it, it is going to give it a bit of thickness as well. So there we go. And I'm just going to get a spatula just to kind of scrape. There's a bit of, there's a bit of the roux and stuff on the, on the sides. Just get a spatula to kind of get it all in there. Off the sides. Now really, we're adding about this. This is about a liter of stock in these uh, in these uh, boxes. So we're going to add the whole the whole thing. Nine hundred milliliters, actually. So almost a liter. We might have to, depending how it thickens up, we might have to add a little bit of. Once we're going to add the cream, though, we're going to blend it. We might have to add a bit of water uh, to thin it out. We'll see. But there we go. Now we just have to basically let this let this simmer, and then when it comes up to the temperature, we'll see, we'll give it some seasoning. And uh, then we'll give it a taste, and and then we'll uh, get it ready to go. 
Let me know. Let's see if I've missed any questions here. Okay, good question. So I've taken the vegetable out and made the roux and put it back in. Yeah, if you're making a soup, Christine, don't, don't, don't. You don't need to. You don't need to. Extra step. Yeah, with the soup. Extra step. And just, I've used, like, I kind of like use a, a, the flat spoon because it, on the bottom, you want to make sure you get all the, I mean, it's not going to burn, but there's always that little bit of, you can, you can feel it when you're, when you're stirring the, um, the flour mixture on the bottom, the roux on the bottom, just make sure you get it all off the, off the bottom and the flat spoon kind of helps with that. There we go. Get that off there too. Perfect. It smells starting to smell good. And learning to cook. There you go. Hopefully you're learning. <laughs> Hopefully you're learning something. Let's put this. This is just on medium heat. Let's just let it keep going. Let's finish the crout. Let's finish the croutons, okay? Because this is going to go for 15, 20 minutes. Soup is always good when it simmers and all the flavors get to get to go. It's even better, kind of, even the next uh, heat it up and. One of those things that actually is kind of tastes better the next, even the next day, right? Uh, what temp? Uh, medium. Um, the temperature is uh, just I don't know. Medium. It doesn't really tell me here. So medium heat, six. On this one, it's two fifty degrees. So there you go, made the soup vegetarian. Yeah, this is already, this is vegetarian. Veggie stock, uh, butter, so it is vegetarian. Uh, if you, again, so if you wanted to make this soup uh, like ve vegan without, um, without any dairy or anything like that, uh, you could definitely do it. Omit the butter. Uh, to thicken it, I would use potato. So saute it off with, uh, Saute it off with some oil instead of uh, maybe a little bit of olive oil instead of the butter. Uh, not as not you don't need very much, just enough to saute everything. Add the mushrooms same way. Get it going instead of adding making it making a roux. Add it. Add a few. Add a few peeled potatoes, and when everything's well, potatoes chop chop them up. Add them. Add them. They'll cook, and after you blend it, the potato will will thicken it up. Um, in place of the cream, you could. I, I find what works best for, for for like in soups especially because the cream always adds a bit adds some written adds some richness right and the alternatives to that non dairy I find one that's that is quite good with with soups is uh, coconut milk so add a touch of coconut milk because it gives the it's quite rich right and has the it gives the it gives the the fat and it it um it's a you know it's obviously fatty. And uh, it gives some nice richness on there. So coconut milk. Oh, my mom's here. Say hi, my mom. Hi, mom. We're making mushroom soup. I don't know what. I think you're just tuning in. It's good you figured out. She, my, it, it, she's been watching from almost the beginning, and I, or very, I think, since the beginning of the of all the live streams. And just in the last few episodes, she's my mom's figured out how to comment. So that's awesome. We finally got it sorted out. <laughs> Let's do croutons. So Christine, we're gonna toast these off. We're gonna make, um, uh, so we've got, uh, these are just just um, sliced up uh, baguette. I've got a mushroom that got stuck on there somehow. Let's do them, let's do these a couple of ways. Not just, um, not just toasting plain. Let's uh, get these ready. So I've got, Couple of uh, we'll do a couple of we'll do these a couple style, and um, we'll see how. Uh, let's see if I still have. I do. I do. Let's. Uh, so first one, what we'll do? Hopefully you can see that. Let's go this way a little bit. This way. There we go. There we are. So my mom was napping. She missed the beginning. <laughs> This is uh, this is chili oil. I made uh, crushed chili oil, so it's a nice red color. Let's get this on. We're gonna put this on half the croutons, just a drizzle. Uh, 
it's not, I mean, it's got a bit of a bite. It's not too bad. So just drizzled, drizzled over top. And so for the second ones, so you have some choice. You can always, if you have, if you're having guests over for dinner, this is kind of a nice way to, if you're making soup, just to uh, spruce, spruce up the garnish a little bit. I've got, uh, we made this actually, actually as well on the channel, reduced balsamic vinegar. So if you remember, I had this posted oh, a couple weeks, a couple weeks back on the channel. And uh, there's, a, there's a video on how to make this, super simple. Same thing, we're gonna drizzle it on top. Like so. And this will give the, this will just give the uh, crouton some nice, nice little flavor. So it's a good way to use up your uh, balsam reduced balsamic vinegar and any oils you have. You could also, the, the pepper oil is nice because we, we, we did the, we put the pepper oil on the Thai soup that we did last week. And uh, it's always good. This has a hole on it. So, so we've got, uh, you can see that they're just drizzled on top. We're going to toast these off. Uh, for, the, for the balsamic one, I've got a little bit of uh, grated, oops, this is uh, Parmesan cheese. So I'm just going to put those on the, just a little pinch onto the balsamic vinegar ones. And chili oil, good question. No, I didn't do a video on the chili oil, Christine, but I, I made that to test it, to test it out because I had never made it before and uh, I will make one, yes. I should have just filmed it, but I wasn't, it was one of those things that I wasn't sure it was actually gonna work out, but it's super simple. So I will, uh, I can film it when I need to make, when I, meet, when I need to make another, another batch, I will uh, do it. So there we go. I think you can kind of see the cheese on there. Let's just toast these off. They're only going to take. Uh, they're only going to take like two two or three minutes, and they're not long at all. So we'll move them out of the way. Let's just see how the soup. So the soup's starting to boil. There we go. And all we're really doing now is bringing it up, get it up to boil, and uh, make sure all the mushrooms are cooked before we uh, before we blend it, and then we'll we'll taste it for seasoning, and then it's basically going to be ready to go. Super easy soup. Super easy soup. If you like your soup, you know, if you if you like it kind of, you know, chunkier, you don't have to puree it by all means. Um, if you want to have your, your mushrooms like that, I would cut them a little bit, little bit smaller, obviously. But, but always, uh, always an option. There we go. Okay, we'll just toast these. They're only going to take, we're just crust getting them crispy. So they're only going to take two, three minutes. If that. So we don't need a cutting board anymore. Another easy, another easy dinner. Not lots of, uh, not a lot of dishes. Not a lot of dishes to clean up, which is, which is nice. Let's turn that up a little bit. So I won't start blending this yet. Let's wait for the croutons to finish because if I start working on the soup, I'll forget about the croutons and those things are gonna burn. And uh, yeah, the air fryer has replaced the Instant Pot. I got a new, I, I know if there's been a few people that have been eagle-eyed and noticed I've got, I got a new set of pots and pans and I find it easier to, if we're doing some cooking, just to be able to show you on these ones, Christine. But uh, I haven't done, uh, I use it, I still use it in the, I make uh, oatmeal quite often in, in, in the Instant Pot, but it has definitely switched to air, to air fryer. And those French fries, like if, I, I think most people here watch, watch that video on the French fries. We've made, we've gone through so many, like so many uh, 
potatoes since making French fries in the air fryer that we're like, we bought, we're buying like 10 pound bags at a time now. We'll have them all the time. We had, um, the other night we had uh, French fries and I made, uh, I made them with um, uh, fresh garlic and a little bit of um, Parmesan cheese and stuff on top with pepper. It was good. And Nadia, no, you didn't miss the cream. You missed, I've got the croutons just toasting off there and I'm gonna wait till they're toasted before we do the, finish the soup. And you basically just want these crusty. There we go. They literally take no time, no time in there. So those are nice little crust, little crustinis for on top of the soup after. We'll just leave them on the side and we'll, uh, we'll have them on top of the soup. So there we go, this is boiling. Let's, first we're gonna blend it. But first I'm going to season it up a little bit. So, this is, uh, I like, uh, this is some, we don't have any, it's always nice if you have, if you can use fresh, you know, fresh herbs and, and everything else. We don't have, we don't have any, this is thyme. So, dried, dried thyme. But uh, let's put that in there. And cracked pepper. Like so. There we go. Smells good. So let's uh let's get this. Let's get this blended up. I find it works. Ooh, that made me, I, I saw that. Truffle fries, yes, those would be good. Just need to get some truffle oil. Definitely, truffle fries. I should do a, I should do, I should do a video on like French fries, like different styles of, just different styles of French fries, make three or four different uh, like toss, tossings. Barb, this, this works the best because it's uh, like one of these bar bar blenders because you can blend it right in the pot and you don't it's a uh, it's safer you don't have to um, you don't have to uh, take it out into a, into a blender if, you, if you're using a like if you're using a blender if you're putting the lid on it's hot you, you turn it on it splash everywhere so it's always nice to uh, you can just do this right in the same pot And uh, basically, we're just blending it until, blending it all until it's pureed. There we go. When we, we used to have... Uh, I remember working working in the hotel. We used to have these these bar blenders, but they were like uh, they were they were like I don't know if you can see it again the camera. They were they were huge, and they were had like two handles. It was like a like working with like almost like the size of a jack not a not a jackhammer, but like that's how tall they were. Blending the giant pots of soup. And uh, yeah, that is a new, a new, a new mixer, Christine. Good eye. Uh, you might remember a certain super chat that you, you, I appreciated uh, last time, a couple times. Well, a couple, couple episodes ago now. Put it towards that. So always appreciate it. It's kind of fun. And uh, just, just bear with me here. I gotta blend it all all together. There's always there's always when you're blending soup like soup. There's always those one or two pieces that never 
seem to want to blend. So you got to kind of hunt for them. There we go. There we are. Oh, one more piece. There we are. I'm just gonna turn that down. That's on. That's on low now. Just just simmering. And let's. Uh, this one's kind of neat because you can you can just take off the the piece and uh, wash it. Yeah, lots of new, lots of new toys in the kitchen. So those, those people that are eagle eyed, they'll notice some new gadgets for sure with the streams. Uh, we got a new chopper as well we use for the salsa. So if you haven't seen the salsa recipe, roasted fire roasted salsa. I did just I didn't do it live, but it was on the on the channel yesterday. Made some salsa uh, with the chopper. So we got some new. Definitely have some new uh, recipes on on the way. So here we go. Now, after you, after you blend it, it is gonna look probably a little bit like it's 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 still a little bit thick, but we haven't added the cream yet, right? So let's finish it with the cream, and then we'll do a final taste, and we'll do a taste test after it's ready. Oh, and Sam likes to chunk a bit. So what you could do if you want a soup. Um, that isn't all, I like it all pureed, it's just me. Um, but if you wanted to have uh, some bits is cut them finer, Sam, at the beginning. And uh, Nadia likes this as well, I can see. So cut them a little, like cut the mushrooms a little bit more precise at the beginning and thinner. And then before you were to say, uh, like do the puree, you can either just take, like, take, like take some of them out, I guess would be the best, you know, and just leave it on the side. Puree it to how much you know, all, 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 um, so it's nice and smooth, and then you can add the add the mushrooms back in. That way they'll that way they'll keep the nice, you know, mushroom shape. But uh, yeah, some people like them kind of. I like it's. I don't know. I always like vegetable soup soups pureed. It's me. And the mixer was from a superstore actually, and a pretty good one. It wasn't that expensive. Um, and it actually has been pretty good. I like how it detaches. Some of the ones, some of the ones don't, uh, the blade part like doesn't, doesn't detach. So it's a bit harder to wash where this one you can just really just, I think, I think you can actually probably put it through the dishwasher on the top, but it's just easy to wash. You don't have to worry about splashing the, the motor. Okay. There we go. It smells really, it smells really good. Mushroom soup I haven't had for ages. This would be good for like a snowy, a snowy day, for sure. Or if you were, uh, if you, if you were uh, in the winter, going out like snowshoeing or something in the winter, put it in a thermos, keep it warm for lunch. All right. So uh, cream. Always use whipping cream when we're gonna thicken your thicken your soup here. Don't you don't you don't want to use milk. Always whipping cream because it's the fat content that gives it the. Uh, Gives it all the flavor, right? And this is kind of really to taste. You don't need it. You know, we've got a lot of flavor in there with the butter already and the the flour, the roux, and a lot of mushrooms. So we don't need it. You don't really need a ton of cream. Probably for this, just over a cup. And this is more to taste. If you want it, if you do want a creamier soup. By all means, add more, add more cream. Up to you. But the I like to kind of really taste the mushrooms as well, and not be too, not be too creamy. And the color is still nice. Not nice, you know, nice mushroom. Like the brown color is nice. You know, you know, you're eating a mushroom soup. It's not. There's nothing worse. Like when you go, when you're going out to to a restaurant, especially, and you're ordering, you know, you're ordering soup, and it doesn't look like mushrooms are brown. So the soup should be brown. If you're ordering broccoli soup, the broccoli, sh it, it should be green. And sometimes you get the soup and it looks like it's like all cream and they haven't put any broccoli in there. So it's always nice to have like whatever soup you're eating, the color of what you're, what you're eating. That way, that way you kind of know 
that the ingredients are what what it's supposed to be. And if it's mushroom, if it's mushroom soup, you should have have lots of mushrooms. So I'm gonna taste this. So kind of I don't know. We're, we'll still put it in the bowl and stuff at the end, but I'm just gonna taste to make sure all the thyme thyme seasoning is nice and and the uh, enough pepper and stuff in there. Should be good though. Let me get a spoon. Oh, it's good. I'm gonna put a bit more time in there. Now, if you were making this at home, you know we do the live we do the live stream in about an hour. But you could, by all means, let this simmer for an hour on its own. It's definitely gonna bring out the flavors you know the flavors some more but uh it still tastes pretty good a bit more pepper and i could have almost put i could have almost put a leather clove of garlic i just had one one size in there i think we can use a little bit of garlic so what i'm going to grab is some just i have a little bit of garlic powder Maybe I'm out. No, oh, there we go. Just got a little bit of garlic powder. This isn't garlic salt, just garlic powder. And uh, I'm just gonna add, just gonna add a, just a little bit, just because it could use a little bit more garlic. So we'll let that cook, cook out, and then we will. Give it a taste. We'll put it in a bowl. We'll put it with our. We'll put it in with our. We'll put it in with our croutons and a nice bowl, and, uh, and we'll get it ready for dinner. So, did anybody have any? Oh, there we go. So ribs on the barbecue. So, does anybody have any any questions about the soup before we get to? Before we get um, put it in the bowl. Just let me know if you haven't already. If you haven't already, we'll put this up here. Let's uh, let's further. So don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. If everybody hasn't hit the thumbs up, hit the thumbs up. It's always appreciated. And I'm going to have to message. I'm going to have to message Stephanie after this live stream because she was the one who mentioned mushroom soup. So unless I've missed her saying hello, I don't think she's joining us tonight. So we can, we'll forgive her for that. I'll make sure I send her, I, I'll make sure I send her, uh, send her um, this video. We'll give her shit for, and oh, wow, thanks so much. Thanks for this super chat. Uh, un, I'm gonna probably mispronounce your name, Andrel Delgra. I don't know how much currency that is, unfortunately. Does any, if anybody knows, let us know in the chat. I'm not sure where that's from. But anyways, thanks so much. I appreciate it. We'll put that, as always, like the super chats we put towards uh, kitchen gadgets on the channel. So keep your eye out for a new kitchen gadget. We'll put that towards it for sure. Appreciate it. Thanks so much. And uh, veggie options, yeah, perfect option for soup. Potatoes, coconut milk, there we go. Like everybody likes the, for vegetarian. I mean, this is veggie already, um, but uh, like vegan, vegan options, yeah, for sure. Coconut milk is nice, for sure, in the soup. The broccoli soup, just gonna let this kind of simmer, because um, it is done. And I uh, just wanna kind of bring it back up to temperature after we seasoned it again. And we'll get it into a bowl, and we will, uh, we'll, do this, we'll do the formal taste test once it boils. Oh, from Norway, welcome. Nice, thank you so much.
people from all over all over the world. So neat. I'm not sure what's the current what the currency is. Does anybody somebody in the, in the somebody must know what the currency stands for? What is the currency in Norway? I can't think of it off. Is it a, it's not a crow now? I'm trying to think. Thank you so much, though. Okay, this is gonna be ready. We've got the bowl. Kroner, yeah, so I was right. Was I right? I think so. She'll have to let us know. All right, soup bowl. Oh, there we go, crown's currency. Cool, thanks so much. All right, gonna boil this. Just taking a second here. We'll get it into a bowl. And we will uh, give it a taste. Uh, for the garnish too, I've got a little bit of uh, chopped chives, little chives. So I'm gonna garnish it with some chives. Got the, got the croutons. If you have the, even on the soup, if you have a balsamic vinegar, you could put, you could put a little bit of the drizzle on top of the soup as well if you didn't make a crouton. Uh, even the chili oil would be nice uh, on top there. All right, there we go. Come along nicely. You can probably see it steaming into the into the camera. I'm only going to taste a little bit because I am going to let this simmer for two. But let's 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 do this. Soup. Move this to the side. And uh, there we go. We can kind of hopefully see right there. There we are. So what kind of crouton should we use? Uh, let me know. Let me know in the comments. We've got the balsamic with the Parmesan cheese or the chili, chili oil one. What one do you want on the soup? Or both, both. Let's do both. Some chives. And vinegar too. So let's here. Let me switch this so we can see. And uh, I can show you. Hopefully, let's see if you can see it. There we are. So crema mushroom soup, vegetarian crema mushroom soup, and the croutons on top are balsamic vinegar, crostini with parmesan cheese, and then there's also a uh, red chili oil crostini. This looks pretty good. Let's give this a taste. Thanks for joining me, everybody. I already did kind of taste it, but we'll see. Tasty. Good soup. Perfect, like, even with some just regular red on the side, too. It's good. I think I would have added a little bit, like I said, a little bit more garlic, but I think as this cooks and simmers for a bit longer, uh, it will taste it will taste that much better. So there we go. Cream mushroom soup, everybody. Super simple. Thanks again for joining me. This is episode, I think, 36. Uh, we didn't have one Monday, but um, we'll be back on Friday. So thanks so much for watching. Uh, thanks, Sundell, for the super chat. Always appreciate it. It's so awesome. And everybody else, have a great rest of the week. We will see you on Friday. I don't know what I'm making yet, but I think it's going to be hummus. But you'll have to stay tuned, check out the channel, and uh, and see. Uh, I'll post it early in the morning uh, what, what, we're, what we're cooking. And uh, that's it, everybody. Don't forget, wash your hands. Have a great night. And just before you leave, don't forget, give us a thumbs up. Thanks so much. Take care, everyone.